in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shout a hallelujah to the Lord God of heaven who rules this, the universe. Praise the name of the Lord. And his name is Jesus. This is another Jesus day. Amen. And we're going to praise the name of the Lord. He said, if I be lifted up, then I will draw all men. Amen. Greetings to Amen. The Mount Zion family, to all the elders, officers, Amen. The family of Mount Zion and the extended Mount Zion family. Amen. Those that are Amen listening to us to live stream and uh, by your phone, Amen, all over this world. Praise God. We salute you and greet you in the wonderful name, the name that is above every other name. Amen. The name revealed to us, the name is Jesus. And the writer said, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. Amen. And that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the hymnist recognized the power of the name of Jesus. And he said, when Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. Praise the Lord. We salute you one more time on this, this Lord's Day in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. To Elder Bromfield and to the technical staff that is here. Amen. We salute everyone in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for what he's doing. Amen. As you know that the government has lifted to a little bit of lifting of the constraint that was on the church. Amen. So on tomorrow night, amen, I will give you, amen, special updates concerning our, amen, returning from the COVID restraint. Amen. God bless you. Make sure you're online tomorrow night. God bless you. Amen. This is the Lord's day and we're going to turn to the word of the Lord today. Praise God to the book of Revelation chapter 6. Praise God and uh, we'll be reading, amen, a few verses there. Praise God. Reading from verse 1 to, to verse 6. I may just stop there. Verse 6. Praise God. And this is John's uh, revelation that he got of Jesus Christ. And it read thus. Do you have your Bibles? Turn your Bibles. I'm reading from the King James Version. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. And I heard as it were the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, come and see, telling John. And I saw and behold a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the voice I heard the second beast say, come and see again, John. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat there upon to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Praise God. In verse 7, now when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I'll stop there. Praise God. Praise God. I intend to go through to see, amen, this revelatory 
um, um, narrative of John as John speaks to us concerning the horsemen. Uh, my topic today is the horsemen are riding. Amen. They are riding. Praise God. Um, I will not be able to complete all of it tonight, today. It may take, amen, a, a couple of preaching exercise to do that. But uh, listen next week and the other week as we speak concerning the horsemen. Amen. They are here. They are riding. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your revelation. Thank you that you're always here. You're omnipresent. Be with us now, Father, in a manifest way. Show up, Jesus. Flex your muscles all over the Gabushada. In the name of Jesus, you are God. And nothing can delay or hinder your manifestation. Do it now, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Horses are among the most beautiful and intelligent animals of God's creation. As a matter of fact, horses are associated much in biblical prophecy. Uh, I intend to explore the implication of what has become known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Uh, the word apocalypse means the complete destruction of the world as described in the book of Revelation, i.e. the four horsemen. It is an event involving destruction or damage on an awesome or catastrophic scale. It means also to remove the veil. It means to uncover. It means to reveal. It means to make clear. All right, John is about to make clear, amen, these images. The four horses and their riders, amen, are anything but beautiful. They are terrible and terrifying. Uh, the scene in which they, amen, they are described uh, are among the most dreadful things in the Bible. Uh, many painters tried to depict, amen, the aspect uh, of these horsemen on canvas. Uh, but no matter how the artist may try to portray, amen, the wonder of, her of horror and amen of these events, uh, they cannot truly give you a good picture Amen. Of the horrific, amen, and gross tech, amen, manifestation when these horse rides. Oh, God, the, the, the shadow of the four horsemen, amen, can be seen all over the world right now. Oh, God. And so uh, I am imploring that the people of God. Put their ears to the ground of prophecy and hear the reverberation, amen, of the hoof of the horsemen as they are riding and it's getting louder and louder every day. Oh God, hallelujah. Ah, oh, the four horses described by John in Revelation chapter 6 as we just read is almost as exact to the four signs that Jesus gave in the book of St. Matthew chapter 24. Amen. Verse 6 to 7. Because Jesus said in chapter 24 of Matthew narrative, he says, and he shall hear of wars and rumors of war. Then he says, nation shall rise against nation. Then he says, kingdoms against kingdoms. 
And fourthly, he said, you shall see famines and pestilences. Amen. Are we not having pestilence right now? Oh, God. We got locusts in Africa. We got COVID. Oh, God. He said, you shall have pestilences and earthquake in diverse places. Are we not seeing earthquake in diverse places right now? So the horsemen are riding. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Ah, the first horse, amen, has to do with counterfeit religion. My God, the second horse deals with war and peace. He who is sent to take peace out of the earth. The third horse deals with famine and pestilence. And, and the fourth horse represents the trauma, amen, of death. Oh God, and the suffering of humanity. Oh, horses and horsemen, amen, they are mentioned about 300 times in the Holy Scriptures. But these four horsemen of the apocalypse amen John describes their color and their color is significant he said one is white the other is red and the other is black and the other is pale oh God these four riders riding amen the horses of the apocalypse is described by John in the book of Revelation chapter 6 oh God imagine these are war horses amen they're terrible hoofs oh God the, the, the onlooker heart is reverberating my God the powerful sound amen of the hoofs of uh, the horsemen can be heard all over the world and even as we speak we can know that there is killing and there is war it is that the horsemen are riding oh god oh god this book is important the book of the revelation of jesus christ that's the title that John gives to it he says it is the revelation or the manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ and so now when we look at the social issues of our day my God John is calling uh, the people of God to repentance uh, and the nations of the world to come to repentance uh, oh God as the, the word of God is proclaimed uh, amen the much less gospel of Christ uh, amen is sent forth in a world that is torn uh, by chaos uh, and suffering uh, the gospel is here uh, it is uh, the gospel uh, that can uh, repair uh, and the, uh, the gospel uh, is the only power uh, that can give humanity back his peace and joy oh God nothing else because right now the billionaire and the millionaire are shaken because they can see the shadow and hear the reverberation of the horsemen riding on their assignment by divine and sovereign authority oh God shout a hallelujah Hallelujah in your house. Oh God, put your ears, amen, to the ground of prophecy. And you can hear the hoofbeats of the horses riding to their assignment. God has given them permission to ride. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, mighty God. 
I'm reminded of a story ha, on May 18, 1980. Ha, Mount Helen in Washington. Ha, amen. Uh, the, ha, all of a sudden, the mountain opened ha, and began to belch out ha, certain perfume that was not lovely. Ha, and all of a sudden, ha, amen, the whole area of Washington ha, was in trouble. Ha, you could hear the siren ha, and every announcement on the TV. Ha, oh God, and on the radio. Ha, amen, the rangers and the sheriff ha, was telling the people in the region ha, to leave to Exodus. Ha, because in a few minutes, ha, Mount Helen ha, is going ha, to unleash fury. Ha, every tourist ha, and every campground, ha, everybody was running ha, because they could see the volcano ha, in the infancy ha, of its explosion. Ha, but there was a man by the name of Harry. Ha, and when everybody was telling Harry to leave, Harry said, I'm not leaving, I'm staying right here. They begged Harry, but Harry refused to leave. Oh God, his family begged him, and he said, I'm staying right here. But at 8.31 a.m., all of a sudden, Mount Helen exploded and sent smoke 10 miles in the atmosphere. Harry and his cats and his well mowed lawn sunk under 50 feet, oh God, of ashes. I'm wondering if he had time to think of his stubbornness. Did he have time to say, I am stubborn? But in seconds, the whole area was covered with ash. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I stand to declare that the horsemen of the apocalypse are riding right now. Oh, shout hallelujah in the atmosphere. If Jesus is on your side, open your mouth and shout a glory. But just take a little walk back with me to John on the agency on a little island called Patmos over 2,000 years ago. John the Apostle is on the, the Isle of Patmos. My God. And John was told in the vision, come and see. And every seal that was open, an angel said, or a creature said, come and see, mighty God. That's why John is shouting the alarm right now. And John was caught up in a vision. Oh God, from glory. And when John, imagine now John is in a prison. His prison is a cave. Oh God. Look at John says, it was on the Lord's day. It means then that the Roman guards and officers were very, was very benevolent to John. They saw an old gray-headed Jewish Christian and he must have asked them to give them him a day to worship. And they have
have permitted John to worship one day out of seven. And while John on the seventh or the sixth or the eighth day was worshiping that they gave, John said that day that I was praying, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And John says, oh God, the voice says, right John. And he said, I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which said, write on the scroll what you see and send to the seven churches to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And so John in the cave prison, John the seer, oh God, he works in the day and in the night evening, he writes on a piece of scroll all the revelation that was downloaded to him by the angel. My God, the book seems difficult, but it demands us to read because it tells us if you read the book, this revelation, a blessing is coming upon you. But it also warns somebody that if you take anything from this book, you take your name out of the book of life and the plagues is going to come upon you. Come on now. Who is this old man? Is he a poet? A prophet? Or a pastor? What drove John to ask the Roman captors? Please give me my day to worship. I will work all other six days. But give me my day to worship. Oh Lord. Oh God, let us imagine here now. John, who wrinkled face old man. His hands are trembling as he scratches Greek letters on his parchment. My God, in a prison cell. Oh God, this was the young John. Amen who was a fisherman that Jesus called from his business and said come and I will make you fishers of men it is John now it is the winter of his life oh God it is John who stood at the cross and gazed at Jesus on a wooden cross and heard Jesus said behold thy mother oh God it is John who was on the Mount of Transfiguration when the Lord Jesus and robe or took off his working clothes and the Shekinah glory emanate on the mountain that was blinding that all oh, brother Peter was knocked almost unconscious it is John now heard a voice and 
turn to see the voice but John said the figure that I saw his ear was white as wool and his feet was tried in the furnace and John could not see and John did not recognize it was the same Jesus that left them and went up to glory shout hallelujah in your house shout to glory that you have the Holy Ghost because the horsemen are riding right now shout and glory mighty God mighty God John hallelujah his cave is empty now John has hidden his parchment under his sleeping mat come on he's got to smuggle amen he's got to send the writings to the church unnoticed and undetected come on for he's writing about the Roman Empire too he cannot afford for his captors to see the writing oh shout a hallelujah this book has been challenged many times amen some condemn the book but oh God some don't believe the book but I'm so glad that the angel who gave John the revelation must have anticipated that there would be much controversy about the book and twice the angel said write this down for these words are true and faithful and another time the angel said these saints are faithful and true and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants things that must surely be done shout it out my God but let look at John here John is an apocalyptist amen what I mean by that is that an apocalyptic writer such as John was one who used vivid imagery and symbolism to speak about God's judgment at the end of the world come on shout yeah and so the Jewish people in biblical time understood apocalyptic style because certain books in the Bible like Daniel and Ezekiel amen is made up of apocalyptic language come on and so now amen the ancient people could understand that style and symbolism come on now it may seem obscure to us but all we need to do is to step back into time and unravel the mystery oh come on now hallelujah amen John concentrated on a theme that the end of humanity or human history amen is known and the dawn 
of a glorious messianic age is about to come. The church is waiting for the re-entering of Jesus Christ in the heavens. And the church is going to caught up to meet him in the air. Come on, shout here. The world must know from the writing of John that no sin will go unpunished. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, many people in our world today is looking at the chaos and the evil of this present world. They wondered vaguely and asking themselves who is in charge of the universe. I know you're asking the question, but John message of revelation answers your question clearly. God is in control. Come on, open up your mouth. There is no reason to live in despair. The promises of salvation and a new life is being declared by the gospel. Come on. And the gospel is in on the inside of some of you. Hearing my voice right now. The church has the gospel. And the gospel says the gospel has brought to light immortality. Oh God, shout out a hallelujah and say yes Lord. John was a prophet. My God, and as John was a prophet, he's calling his generation and this generation to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Come on. John also is aware of the judgment of this world that the only thing that can hold back the judgment of God is repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Come on, open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. Repentance is needed as you hear the hoofbeats of the horsemen riding. Oh, hallelujah. For John said the seal was open and he saw the horsemen waiting for the directives of God. They could not leave until God said move. Shout a glory. Shout a hallelujah. Can you hear the horsemen? Can you see the effect of the riding of the horsemen? COVID is the symptom of the hoofbeats of the horsemen that are riding. Famine and locusts in Africa is the heartbeat of the hoofbeat of the horsemen that are riding. Come on, shout, shout a hallelujah, shout a glory. So John shifts from being a prophet, shift 
from being a polarist. John Schiff now to be an evangelist. And he's declaring good news. Come on. Hallelujah. He's declaring to a chaotic, confused world that he has a greater message for this world, for this sick world, for this greedy world, for this sick sin sick well John said I present to you the revelation of Jesus Christ come on that's why John's message focuses supremely on Jesus Christ the son of God who died for our sins rose again from the dead and has given us who have believed in him eternal life that's what John wrote in his gospel narrative John said in John 20 verse 31 and these are written that you may believe that Jesus Christ the son of God and that believing you may have life in his name shout hallelujah shout a glory come on John moves from an evangelist he'll become a pastor hallelujah come on the writing of his personal note to the seventh church shows John love for the brethren come on he sent a personal note to each of the seven little groups of Jewish Christians scattered across Asia Minor. He addresses them. Come on, because John was deeply concerned about the church. John was concerned because he knew emperor persecution was upon the church. John knew that Caesar, oh God, was persecuting his brothers. Come on. Shout hallelujah. And again, John bear the message and is calling everybody to repentance and his challenge was to live for God to take a stand for purity and justice and righteousness it doesn't matter who may be against it John was concerned like we are concerned amen we have watched amen and witnessed the enthusiasm and the thrill of early Christian saints my God we were thrilled by their growth but then shortly after amen we are disappointed as we watched their first love die oh God I have seen men and women eagerly embrace the fate and then watch them slowly abandon the faith amen giving over again to idolatry and self-destruction so John stood as a pastor and writes amen and was worried for the flesh 
And so John came forward in revelation and sent forth a pastor's letter to a flock as an urgent telegram bearing a brilliant battle plan for the people at war in Asia Minor. Come on, shout here. I'm laying out and I am delivering right now an urgent telegram to the church unto unviewers, unto backsliders, unto unsafe friends. Hallelujah. That the horsemen are riding right now. Hallelujah. And that's why I join in with John to preach from the revelation of Jesus Christ. Because I heard the distant sound of the horse's hoofbeat come in. I can see the evil riders and the horizons of life. And I'm standing as an evangelist with one goal to proclaim new life in Christ. Come on, open up your mouth and say, Lord, save me out of all of this. Can you see the shadow of the horsemen in the distance on the horizon coming? Hallelujah. I heard John say when John was caught up in astonishment and wonder. I heard John say even so Lord come quickly. Oh God shout it out loud and long. Shout hallelujah. I can't finish the message but I will continue on it. Oh God and the four horses as they ride on planet earth shout hallelujah and so now in the midst of serious trouble ahead of the world there is still hope in Jesus Christ oh hallelujah the four horsemen are loose my God and John the saintly amen seer and Patmos was writing just to the churches and Asia no but he was writing to us also but there is vision has some hope in it although the letter was addressed to seven churches amen it is addressed also to the churches of this present day oh hallelujah and to understand the vision amen you gotta take a walk back down I'll take a pilgrimage back down to Patmos and watch this old man in his prior closet in a cave. His prison cell was his prior closet. Amen. Was his crime's desk. That's where he wrote. That's where he prayed. In a cave where his mat was, where he slept. Shout it out. But on this particular day, amen. A great voice interrupted his silence of study. Oh, shout it out loud and long. Do I have a witness here? Shout hallelujah. Look at the pastor's heart. Amen. 
that felt responsible to write to the church because he was concerned about their spiritual growth hallelujah every man of God every called preacher is concerned about spiritual growth and development of the membership over which he has the oversight given to him by the Holy Ghost shout it out because John in that confined hewn out rock that they call his cell the John now is very concerned because all his other friends who have started the church were already dead Apostle Paul was beheaded Apostle Peter was crucified on a wooden cross John's brother James was beheaded by Herod Agrippa young Mark was dropped through the streets of Alexander and was burned. Oh Lord, some of his friends went disappearing. So John was concerned. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth because out there back in the city of Jerusalem and in Rome there was a great battle going on Jesus or Caesar shout it out come on because Rome was losing impact on the world that they rule in order for Caesar amen to get control amen they have devised a worship day for Caesar and every citizen had to pass by the worship center with incense in their hand and throw incense at the altar and declare that Caesar is Lord now the Christians the apostolic Christian would not do that John was concerned shout hallelujah shout a glory so John is told write what you see whatever you see write it down hallelujah so every evening after work is over John roll up his sleeping mat pull the parchment from under his mat scratch some Greek letter as the spirit bring back to his remembrance all the information that the angels showed him on the Lord's day shout hallelujah oh God oh God God bless you amen I'm saying in the midst of the horsemen riding there is hope for John saw one sitting on a throne hallelujah and when John turned to see him John could not look the light surrounding him was blinding and John said that there were four and twenty elders that sat around his throne and each elder had a crown on their head but when the angels or the creature open up their mouth and said holy 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 is the Lord amen John said that 
and the four and twenty elders took off their crown and laid it at his feet and they opened their mouths and said thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power and majesty shall hallelujah trouble is on the horizon this is just the beginning of sorrow but I present to you the Lord Jesus Christ the one seated on the throne his name is Jesus open up your mouth and declare his name is Jesus seek ye the Lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he's near let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let them return unto God and then Jesus said come unto me all ye that are labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest come take my yoke and learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light shout hallelujah shout a glory in your homes in your car in your living room in your kitchen open up your mouth and shout a glory you need the Lord you need Jesus now before the trouble come you need Jesus now before the harsh men are visible but the sound of the harsh men can be heard put your ears to the ground of prophecy and you will hear the hoofbeats of these harsh men of the apocalypse for the seal was open they were given permission to ride shout hallelujah 